Welcome back to part two of Mod My Evo 8 presented by our Patreon supporters where today we're gonna bolt up this fresh new spoolie boy. Before we tell you more about that very special turbo solution that we have for Robert's car, let's quickly explain to you what's going on underneath the hood. This is an internally stock 4G63, so nothing going on inside of it. It does have a few bolt-ons on it though, including a FP white turbo. So it's a stock housing with uh, an FP white internals in it. However, it's a very early version of that, which does suffer from surge at low RPM or high boost levels, which Robert has reported is an issue with this turbo setup. So that was one of the things on his like wish list of us to fix. So we think we do have a very good fix for that, which we're gonna to get to work on shortly. And while we're in there, we're gonna upgrade some other stuff like the radiator. You can see he's already done some hard pipes and some other mods that are in there that will support what we're gonna be doing. So without further ado, let's get out the wrenches. Let's pull this rad and pull this turbo system out of there. So here's a fun one. We've taken out the two bolts and by taking out, I mean they sheared off, but it shouldn't matter because they're not holding the downpipe on anymore and we've taken the bolts off on the backside. So this thing should just drop down, but it's fused on here. So Robert, your California car appears to have some non-California related uh, rust on it. I don't know if it's just from its time with you in Ohio or if it lived some other place. Getting pretty warm there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. It is moving more than it was. Things are. I think that is going to be the solution for sure. Side to side. It is definitely moving more. Oh. No, it's coming. I feel it. Heat is your friend. Oh my god. I can feel it stretching. Okay, here it comes. Oh, yeah. oh, of course, look at that. Heat, man. Heat on the Rust Belt cars always does the job, but you can see the lip up here. It's exactly what, uh, what I mentioned. This lip just gets corroded on it. Thankfully, we won't be reusing this because you can see we did snap, as Dave mentioned, both bolts, and uh, that thing's looking really rusty itself. We did it! No, we didn't. My O2 sensor are stuck because it's off. <sighs> this turbo pull takes me back to my uh, teenage years when I used to work on DSMs and it was that much of a struggle. All the bolts, as you guys saw, or the, the sorry, the, the nuts were just so corroded, had so much rust on them that it took a ton of heat to get them. Thankfully, we did not snap a stud, which I am uh, extremely, extremely happy about because those 
that's when things get really weary. You gotta work on, drill the head and stuff. You don't wanna do that. Ah! <laughs> okay. God. I, I'm worried I'm gonna break the stud DP. I, I don't know. I just put a ton, a ton of heat into this. And uh, it's, it's not moving at all. You guys just saw, I'm gonna round the nut. I try to pull on this any harder. I feel like it's just, it's going to either break the stud or it's gonna strip the nut. And then we're, we're gonna be in a world of hurt. We're really, right now, oh yeah, see, it's just, there's no way. There's no way it's gonna go. There's no chance. I just feel like, yeah. I gotta, it's gonna be a struggle to get those apart, but really these are cosmetic. They're not terrible. Like these, these studs are the worst of them, the top three here. Um, and I just, I'm not confident enough to remove these without potentially shearing them and having even more headache. And we really don't wanna go down that hole. If this was completely rusted, then I'd say yes. Sorry, Robert, we were hoping to replace these, but uh, we just don't wanna break them. You just, I, I just don't want to go down that road. So the goal of this car has been OEM Plus. Robert told us he wanted to keep this very, very streetable. He didn't want to make a, a ton of horsepower. He, he kind of wanted to keep the essence of the Evo, just give it a bit more power. And so what we've decided to do is upgrade the turbo on his car with this, which is a, a Mitsubishi Heavy Industries 18K turbocharger. And this thing packs a serious punch within a stock location and stock housing turbo. This thing can make up to 400 150 wheel horsepower on E85 it can make over 500 wheel horsepower actually so there's guys out there making like 525 even 550 on E85 so this thing is a seriously powerful turbo the beauty of this turbo is it does uh, have great mid-range power and it carries all the way to the top so really there there aren't many compromises with this thing and we source this through full race huge thanks to them for having these in stock they're hard to find and full race doesn't just actually make manifolds they are now a massive turbo distributor so they've got garrett they've got efr they've got uh, mhi turbos anything what you from a turbo perspective from what you need they have you covered and what we ended up doing is robert supplied us a bunch of parts like this o2 housing and a ported stock manifold we had this uh cerakoted by jp over at stripping tech and uh, the reason is the Cerakote actually traps the heat inside. And I think it also looks much nicer than the old uh, rusty color that was on here. So without further ado, this is gonna be a, a simple bolt on. We're gonna get this all bolted together and then slide this back on. Compared to our Evo 6 turbo install, that was remarkably simple, almost too simple. I love OEM uh, plus installs like this where everything just seems to bolt up. We did have a small, couple small items. Um, the compressor housing is obviously bigger, so we did have to bend some of these lines, but as you can see, they all just fit up with a, a little bit of tweaking. The uh, heat shield here that we put on 
it bolts onto the stock O2 housing, which we didn't have, so you saw I used the zip tie there. It is time to talk about rads, which is a totally rad subject, and man, this rad is super rad. I get totally pitted when I talk about these coil rads. I'm so stoked pitted. on this. I'm gonna get so pitted, bro. Oh, it is time to upgrade the radiator with this coil rad which features their N-Flow technology. And what that means is they actually put a partition in the upper and lower end tanks, which creates an N-shaped flow pattern through the rad, which means the coolant spends more time in the radiator, which means it has more time to be cooled. And of course, with Koyo's uh, you know, high density fins here and the extra capacity of this very thick radiator, you get 50% better cooling capacity than the factory rad, which is already a pretty beefy rad. So very impressive that Koyo rads managed to improve the cooling by 50%. And like with all of their rads, it is beautifully manufactured, all aluminum, TIG welded. You don't have any plastic end tanks that can crack and fail on you. Just dropping it in here. And like with all Koyo rads, we find they fit very well. They're designed to fit in the OE position without any clearance issues or anything. And this one is dropping in there very nicely. In fact, it is, there it goes, down into those factory rubber bushings. Dude, I am totally pitted now. That is a rad rad. And now we can fit up the factory fan and pray that it clears this larger compressor on the turbo. There you have it, can confirm. The factory fan fits perfectly, even with this bigger turbo and the coil rad. So uh, well done everybody. And especially well done me, because I worked really hard assembling this whole turbo setup and polishing this heat shield and just making sure everything is OEM plus for our man Robert, who, by the way, if we had time, I would repaint this fan shroud because it doesn't look great. But uh, this is not a restoration, everyone. This is a quick and easy build. So we're trying to not go too deep. Going for the performance. Performance, exactly, the looks, exactly. Know? Robert can do the detailing later. We're just getting him the good stuff to go fast. So we're, I think, pretty much done here. So it means we can put all the stuff back in here that we took out and we will be, I think, basically done under the hood, aren't we, PT? Well, wow, I think the engine bay cleaned up so nicely. Uh, quick things to note, we did do a mass airflow delete. So we grabbed this AM uh, air filter here that we stuffed into the ETS rubber coupler and it seems to be sitting there nicely. It's nice and tight. So that's a, certainly a victory. We also did add this carbon fiber rec speed valve cover trim along with the timing cover. And I think it just, you know, adds a little bit of, or it complements the carbon fiber lip in the rear wing. What we didn't love though was the, the chrome on the Tome exhaust uh, manifold cover. You can see it was just adding a little bit of contrast. So I went over to my uh, Evo wagon and stole this, which is an OEM heat shield. We ended up painting it black with some uh, uh, heat black paint and I think it just it looks so much better with that than with this but of course post in the comments guys did you do you like the bling of this or do you like the stock cover here another sore spot on this car is the exhaust system as you can see it is very ill-fitting and it is rubbing against this carbon trim piece here which I think is why this, this trim piece is see better days um, and you can also see here Somebody has dented it in to clear the transfer case. So it wasn't a, a good fitting exhaust. It does say JGT 500 on it. It's made in Japan. I've never heard of this brand before. So it could either be like a JDM exhaust that somebody put on use, but um, we do have a much better solution than this. And here it is. Feast your eyes on this. This is a Canadian made product. Even the tubing is made in Canada. This is from Ultimate Racing who are fairly local to us. They're in like the Stouffville, Ontario area. We've known Johnson, the owner there for a long time, and he was kind enough, kind enough to send us this Evo 8, Evo 9 system. And this is a true three inch system from downpipe to tailpipe. So there's no necking down anywhere. And as you can see, the, well, I don't, maybe you won't be able to see it, but the, the, the tubing is actually thinner gauge than you typically get in a three inch exhaust system. So this is 18 gauge, and typically you'll see like 16 gauge or thicker on, uh, on an aftermarket exhaust system. And what that does is save quite a bit of weight. It's also 
totally customizable. So when you order this, you can have them add in more resonators or add in bigger mufflers. You can have them add in O2 bungs for like a wide band. So it's really order to your taste. And I think that's a, a pretty awesome thing too. Man, hindsight really is 2020. Uh, after looking at that Ultimate Racing three inch downpipe, we realized that you know what we should have done is gone with a full three inch O2 outlet because you want to evacuate the exhaust gases as quickly as possible from the turbo to maximize power. So, sorry Robert, we ended up using yours, which was that, that MA Performance one. And this is a 60 mil outlet, whereas the three inch one is a 76 mil outlet. This is it right here. So you can see it is actually quite a bit of more real estate that you would get from that. So in terms of how much power this is gonna rob, I don't think it's gonna be you know a ton amount, but it could equate to like 10 wheel maybe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just throw on a little bit of the uh, the Permatex Optimum Max Temp. We're, we're done with using tubes, guys. We've got this new little Permatex uh, gun here, and this is gonna make application, and we're gonna put a little bit on here just in case, because you can see this is going to be uh, a bit of a tight fit. If I don't align this perfectly, it's gonna slip off on one side, and we do not wanna have any type of, of leak here. The exhaust system is on as you guys just saw and the fitment is really, really nice. I do love, for example, how close it is to the oil pan here. It's just like nicely tucked up. Everything is out of the way. Uh, fit, fit like a glove. Unfortunately, the rear section of carbon here was super faded and nasty. So I took it off, gave it a quick wet sand and just put some clear on it. So we're gonna let this dry. I think it's gonna look better than it did. Well, after three coats of clear, this cleaned up so, so nicely. Yeah, it it's, uh, it's a million times better than it was. Uh, we didn't even polish it, believe it or not. That's just clear coat. So um, last thing, we will start up this Ultimate Racing Exhaust in the next episode and you, will got, and you will hear what it sounds like. I'm willing to bet it's gonna be pretty good. We got a cat in there. It's not gonna be too loud. This is certainly a street exhaust. So, I'm, uh, I'm pumped for that. And we are gonna officially wrap this episode here. That's right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We've got one more episode coming at you and it is gonna be jam-packed. We are gonna tune this thing. We're gonna take Robert for a ride in it. It's gonna be awesome.